Hi, I'm Dave Epstein. Welcome to this edition of Growing Wisdom in the middle of a patch of hay-scented fern. And today's topic, tough plants for tough spots. So Dan Jaffe from Garden in the Woods is gonna help us today talk about different plants for some of these tough areas. And Dan, we're standing in the middle of a bunch of ferns. Looks real nice. Yes, this is Denstadia, or the hay-scented fern. And, uh, you know, this is a fern that kind of can be a blessing or a curse depending on how you use it and where it's growing. Um, if you're looking for a small patch of kind of delicate ferns, this is a really awful choice for you. But if you've got one of these tough spots where nothing seems to grow, then this is a great choice. It's a rhizomatic spreader, it fills in thickly, and it's one of the few plants that'll grow well in this dry, acidic shade that seems to be a real problem area in New England. And so why is it a bad choice if I want, you know, this is pretty, what if I want to just put one of these in my shade garden or? Because it will not stay as one for long. Um, it is going to form a big patch. Um, it will form a big patch in a tough area. It'll form a huge patch in a rich kind of well, you know, fertilized area. Dan, you mentioned this term rhizomatous spreader. Some folks may not be up on that particular terminology. So uh, in layman's terms, what does that mean? What that means is basically a rhizome is a type of root that a lot of these plants will have. And it's a, a root that in many cases um, will kind of divide and offset and will start spreading. Something like the hay-scented fern will form these thick rhizomes, these thickened roots underneath, and then new rhizomes will kind of grow off the older ones and it will kind of start forming babies in that manner and just spread in that way. Um, as opposed to a plant that has more of a traditional kind of fibrous root system where it tends to form a clump and not really continue spreading. Those rhizomatous plants are the ones that tend to form big patches. It's not a plant that will grow around other plants. It'll, it's a plant that will grow right through them. Okay, so these tough plants, folks, they're great for tough areas because they are tough, but if you put them in an area that's not tough, they're gonna spread really quickly. Exactly, um, this is you know a great plant when used appropriately and almost more of a weed when it's in an area where you don't want it growing. Um, it's really a matter of kind of where you want it to be, how it's growing and what you can do with it. Okay, so we've got the hay-scented fern. What are some other thoughts on plants for some of these tough areas? So tell me about the area they're good for and then the particular plant. Yep, uh, one of my favorite ones that I really like to talk about is the lowbush blueberry. And the reason I like this one is because if it's dry soils, it will grow well there. Whether it's in full sun on the side of a rock face or in the deep kind of dry acidic shade similar to the hay scented ferns. And who doesn't like a blueberry? I mean, you get that flower in the spring that's really nice looking, that of course edible berry that tastes great, great fall color. And despite the fact that it's a plant that we normally think of for kind of rich well areas, it will grow very well in some of the nastiest spots. So, you know, when we're talking shade, one of the questions I get sometimes is that people try to put a lawn underneath a maple tree and it just, you can't get grass to grow. Would, would that plant or the hay scented fern, would either of those be good for those real tough areas? Yes, they would both be great for those areas. The lowbush blueberry would do very well in there. And the lowbush blueberry, unlike the hay-scented fern, even though it really is a tough plant, it's not the kind of one that's really gonna take off the way that these hay-scented ferns will. Hay-scented fern would definitely work well under that, you know, under the maple tree, as long as you want it to stay under the maple tree and you don't, you know, as long as you don't mind it kind of going a little further out from there. That's why maybe that lowbush blueberry would be a better choice. Um, another one that pops right into mind is our native um, Pennsylvania sedge, the Carex pennsylvanica, which is a great, native lawn alternative for those shady environments. It is basically a grass, even though it is a sedge, that will grow in the shade much better than it ever would in the full sun. And will it create a nice little mat as well over time? It will, it's one that really does form those kind of woodland lawns that look really nice. In fact, if you come walk up to our idea garden, you'll see a woodland lawn being established in there using the Pennsylvania sedge. Great, hey Dan, once again, terrific information. Thanks a lot. And thanks for watching this edition of Growing Wisdom, Tough Plants for Tough Spots.